Three. One. All right, so doing a demo review of Eliasu on Granary. Mm. Said he needs help looking for places to be more aggressive and get more involved with his team. We're laying up top for Smid. Go Slama. That was a little faster than you. You don't want to cross that early. You need to bait, bait him out a little bit more. You're getting way too aggressive here. This guy's probably going to punish you. And you didn't like... When you see both scouts roll out up top, you need to expect that you're going to be pressured. So you need to sticky the crate directly in front of you. The one that scout jumped onto, that's really predictable. And if you sticky that guy, like you're playing too aggressively in the first place, but if you play aggressively, you have to be ready to counter the enemy running at you. So put the sticky on the crate in front of you if you see scouts coming up top, because one of them is definitely going to walk at you. You get knocked off the high ground really early. You've done very little damage. Now you're in a bad position when there's the double bomb. You play this really well though. Okay, these people aren't these people aren't your job anymore. After I, you know, you did good damage to them as they were jumping when they're in the air, and that was really good. But after that, you need to let let the cleanup happen for other people. You need to be looking forward because right now their scouts are running into you probably. Yep, this is the aggression coming in. You're hitting good stickies here. You're playing these angles really well. Uh, so your med died. You don't want to back up the choke. You just I would push around the left side and try to get on their medic. Their medic is the only thing that matters right now. Yeah, you kind of hesitate in the chaos and get cleaned up. So now if the medic dies, then it's going to be really lucky. It doesn't look like the medic's dying, so. You guys should just be holding less. It looks like they're slow enough that you can set up kind of a defense on second here. I would put the trap a little more forward. You can hear, kind of, if you have your volume up, you can hear where they're building, and where they're building like, tells you where their medic is. So you can kind of take advantage of that. These traps aren't really going to do anything. The one Z might. But if someone's crossing over the point there, they're going to already be uber-charged. The chances of that trap on the left dropping somebody, yeah, and they spot it because they're going right yard anyway. So here I need to be, you'd be worried about, like people crossing the point here isn't a very big concern. Yeah, they're climbing up top. Most teams will do this if the demo man is up on the enemy team, because going up top gives you a much better position to fight second, especially when, like, your team is doing, you're huddled in the lower left here. So hopefully you have someone calling it. Let me see. It doesn't look like up top's being spotted at all. You have a gun going up, so you just need to concede this right now, basically. You can play in the shutter, but do not go past, like, the shutter itself. Okay, you give it up. And you need to put yourself in a central position, because you don't know what door they're actually going to come through. They choose to go up top. Don't stick the point here. Granary last is way too big to do stuff like this. They're not going to go for that point for god knows how long. The play with this Uber is to kill your whole team. It's not to go for the point. So by sticking the point, you're committing a lot of ammo to not doing anything. You're also... I don't know, the call that they came in up top was probably pretty late. Um, but you rotate towards the middle, you're in like prime fucking dying position right now. You could have played by left spawn and been a lot safer and just like played long range. But since since he crossed over to the point to put stickies on it, it's not not very good. Your gun's only level 1 too, so that's going to die really fast. You kite to the back right. I would try to kite kind of forward here. I would try to like side swipe them a little bit. Okay, now they're just going for the point. I don't know. That was a, like a full disad last hold, so it's hard, but you definitely didn't didn't do a lot to control positions there that they would have liked to take, and you committed a lot of ammo on non-important things. Like when Eber comes in, I know it's like really tempting to, I don't know, just pick a place and stick it, but that's not, you have to like try to find things that aren't overcharged to actually do damage to them. Because their whole team didn't come in up top, right? People pushed in from the flanks, and those are the people you have to focus on. So if you can do that while avoiding getting destroyed by their Uber, you'll end up having a lot more chance of success on these holds. They roll out. Last time didn't work so great for you. I don't think you like messed it up especially. Their demo's on four this time. On granary mid especially, it's important to have your volume really high so you know where the enemy demo is. Like, cause you can tell very, very clearly like if he's rolling out up top by the timing of the sticky that he shoots. Cause the sticky that comes from choke is a lot sooner than the one that comes from up top. So you can use that to kind of get a read on what their demo is and like hit a good early sticky on him. 
last minute both their scouts roll out up top and they did the same thing again. You don't need to fall down there. The whole the whole purpose of rolling out up top is that you have a better position on it and you're giving up the position almost immediately, like surrendering it so that you can dodge stickies. You can dodge stickies on that like up top. He's way too way too far away to be able to consistently like hit you. And the further away you play, like you put yourself in a bad position here. Those two people on the top right are probably gonna destroy you. And the demo has a much clearer sight line on you when you get this close. So the early bomb comes in, your med's not very well protected. Um, your med was kind of like slow to move, and the scouts weren't like in a proper place to help him. So again, their med, di uh, your med died. Their med's the only option here. You have 40 health, so I really doubt you're gonna do anything. But I would just like try to play a long range here. Yeah, you're doing the right thing. Just get in and die. Your two health. Oh, your scout did good. Well, resting. I don't know. Again, um, you should have just committed. Even if you died there. Okay, no, I'm not going to say that. No. Living was fine. The guy won the 2v1. No point in being like, oh, you should have. It's What happened happened. This is brave stuff. Yeah, the only way... Yeah, they're going to come up top here. I, I know it seems like... Like I'm just like looking at that through the walls. I'm like, yeah, yeah obviously, but... Um, if the soldier is the first one that spawns, and you can keep tabs on that kind of thing, like which class spawns first, uh, a soldier is definitely going to roll out up top. It doesn't look like he sees you though. Yeah. I don't know. I, I would rather have you you have um, put a sticky like above this door here, and then play the corner tight or something like that. And then as soon as someone opens the door and walks through, you dead on them and jump away. I think playing in like more enclosed areas when you're watching traps like this means that you can watch the traps from further away, and also that you have a more clear escape route. Because people can't chase you as fast as you can sticky jump away if you're already like prepared to do it. But when you're playing in like a tight box like that, especially because there there are three doors that you have to watch, right? Upper, left, and right. And on the off chance that you, you know, guess wrong with the door that you trap, someone can just get in for free. But I would much rather you have like committed to your initial idea and played here instead of getting so close because it was kind of risky and like the success rate was a lot lower. So you've got large, uh, you've got yard locked down here, and um, you get your team in. They've got a spy up. You don't know that. Oh, he's checking crits, I guess. You can be peeking this. You can be like playing really close to the wall. Their team just gave it up for some reason, but um, if they were contesting, you could be playing like further back towards Z and towards the pack and be spamming them a bit harder. Their demo's really hurt. I'd expect you guys to go for a sack probably. At this point, here's trapping up. I like to put those traps um above the doors because the way the granary shutters work are kind of broken. They don't actually like you can't dead on someone right as they open the shutter on granary because the way the door is is fucked up. So I like to put those above because the way the roller door is like hides the stickies kind of, and also you'll kill the person at the same time either way. And it's a little less expected too. And it can't get knocked away by rockets like what happened to yours. You go for a sack but you get forced. You have the one pick here, so the right play here is not to dive or like focus the NG. Get the force first, carry to the way, rotate to the right probably, and then play the play the player advantage, but I really doubt that's what's gonna happen. You get the force. Y'all managed to live. You're rotating to the right. Wow. Your scout died, but... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. There's not a lot you could have done there. Your like, target selection when you were in last was not the best. And you didn't um, play to control the enemy team movement, really. Like, as they're coming forward, you kind of like have to play to deny them. You kind of used all your ammo in a weird way. And then you weren't ready for the counter-aggression that they were giving you. And here I think you could be playing closer, because after your scout died they still had a person dead so it was even numbers. You can like afford to be a little tighter on that door, especially if you play that like right corner under a lunchbox, you can like really shit on this door. Here you're not really, not really doing a lot. I'm saying like, maybe one problem that you're having, like related to what you put, uh, you messaged me when you sent the demo was, there are a lot of ways that you can 
do effective damage even without taking a lot of heals and it's important to like try to think about ways like that ways that you can play an angle that's kind of like better suited for you than it is for them or how you can like safely hit a clump of people without taking the beam yourself and i think that was one of them where you can't really get punished if you you're like being mindful but you could do a lot of damage there and instead what you did was just kind of like concede a ton of ground without really putting up much resistance because you're like playing for your life then the flank comes from drop down, which is unfortunate. Again, you don't need to commit. You don't really need to commit your body here. You just, since your scout is going onto the point, what you can do is to shoot in front of him. Kind of, people are going to be pushing him, and so you're kind of like baiting him in a way that um, provides you with a lot of free damage. And you don't have to like walk forward at all. You could be doing this from outside the shutter even. Yeah, but you commit your body, and I feel like you're going to die if the scout doesn't hit a lot of good shots. Okay, your soldier flank comes in. And their med calls to just leave. Alright, so that repush was pretty good. You were a little over aggressive, but you ended up not getting punished for it. I would just try to knock the soldier off high ground there. Um, the soldier is like a free target. If your scout, if you and your scout were really coordinated, then... Nah, no, you're right. Um, I guess their spawns were really close. You didn't really have a good way of knowing that, but... I would have probably just focused the soldier there to get him off high ground if your scout was really going to make a play for the medic. That's kind of your whole team. That, that guy getting in up top is kind of a beast. Because now they're going to get in for free, yeah? And you can't shoot at them. Well, they use, that's not free, but... See, the uber is so bad? Yeah, okay, now you, you're playing this a little passively. After it's the, just the demo chasing through that shutter, I stop being scared, you know? I'm like, this demo can't kill shit, his uber's almost over. You know, a demo needs like a lot of time to do what he needs to do to actually kill people. So, after he like came and he put the sticky down, I just like, no fuck you, and then I'd like hold the shutter probably. As opposed to backing up all the way to choke. I'd like play by the brick pain tank. So they don't have heals, what you want to do here is just slow it down as much as possible. Your scout kind of beefs and gets caught in a 1v2. And a soldier comes to your drop down. You have a sniper, so you're down actually a lot of people here. Your soldier's rolling out. It's just you three. I would rotate to a different side of the map and try to push that with like some purpose. Like I said, you can you have the advantage. You can take this as slowly as you need to. There's no need to rush anything. You can collect this guy even. Like you're getting second here no matter what. And once you have their last, like it's just a beef that like kills you or makes you lose the round. The trap's called you know that they're all back left, so it should be fairly easy for someone to get in, or they're all back right, so it should be easy for someone to get in back left. Oh, that's really unfortunate that your scout died to that. So you've still got big advantage, you're dry pushing left here, they don't have a sniper, these are easy picks. You don't need to hold W here. You need to be the person not involved in the sewer. Make sure you're loaded for the post fight and make sure that you're controlling uh, high ground and stuff like that. Like, you don't really need to commit to this at all. There are much better people than you to like go in and go deep on them. You're tunnel visioning really hard on this one demo man who's not super important. There was a clump of four people to your right side, and you're shooting probably the least important person out of all of them, but it looks like all your other players hit their shots and you had a pretty good uber, so... You had a good pipe. So I've noticed on mids that you kind of I like going up top a lot as Demo Man. I think it's just like the best position and really safe to play, and you have access to the pack anyway. But you're giving up the positioning really easily without a lot of resistance. I feel like that's kind of not the smartest way to play it. You just had to go choke this mid, which is sorry. Right. Here are the demos up top. Play further back here, kind of. You want to play. No, where you are is fine. You're like playing in the mid ground. You want to be hitting people, I don't know why you're rotating left here, I would just take point with your medic. You have such good positioning there. You see the three people up top and you want to be hitting them as they're crossing over from catwalk to crate because they have to do a kind of linear jump there. So it's really easy to get really good damage there and if you're calling like how their combo is rotating, that's kind of how you want to position your uh, your shots. But instead of like keeping that good control and good visibility, you're going behind a big box, you're putting yourself in a corner, I don't really agree with that at all. Like, this is where the bombs could come in and really rape you, but... 
You see, exactly, exactly like that, basically. Their soldiers beefed really hard, but the med died anyway. I think it's a lot better on this map for demo man and also for medic to just put yourself in a position to get the most heals out as possible, then read where the enemy is coming from and put yourself in the other corner. And what you did instead was like, I think it's a big misconception on this map that you have to pick a side and then push it. That's probably not the way to do it. I mean, it, it probably has like good success, especially when you're mirroring the enemy team because both of you just put yourself in like opposite corners of the map and it turns into whoever plays it better wins. But I think it's a lot better to kind of take a central position and then rotate away from the enemy team as opposed to like everybody go left or everybody go right and then like hoping that the enemy doesn't correctly read it and like shit on you. That's just like my perspective on a lot of meds, honestly. Good sticky there. Make sure you're loaded. Oh, uh, you get flanked. Um, the flank was kind of readable. I don't know, it's like a pretty small, like a micro decision thing. Their med should die here, right? Yeah. And it's a 1v2, so your team should win. Basically, after, after the med dies, you have to know that you're going to be committing. So instead of like, you panicked a little bit and just dumped everything that you had, I would like, kind of get my bearings, find out where the medic is, make sure I'm completely loaded, focus, like, try to figure out where the enemy team is, because it's kind of late in the mid, people are kind of scattered, so you can kind of, like, piece together where they are, and then, then try to commit, as opposed to just, like, zombieing in. Is it a pause? Okay. Fast forward through this. Alright, we're back. You guys win mid. Everybody's uh, doing the electric slide. So they've given up yard, you guys are getting in right. That's good. From here you probably can't push from the shutter, so... If you want to solo hold shutter, that's fine. If you want someone else to solo hold shutter while you rotate left, that's also fine. I don't recommend your whole team sitting on right here and trying to bully in. Like, it's it's a lot easier to create an advantage on the other side of the map. Where players have lower buffs, the terrain's a lot easier to like ambush people. You know, it's not through one big choke point, it's like a bunch of small choke points and like the spiral staircase and stuff like that. So I definitely think your heal should be over on that side because this is the part of the map where like the least action happens. You're not going to get anything playing that shutter. So it's a stalemate. You guys are the aggressors. I don't know. You're not actually down a person. So send send a sack in through lunchbox or something. Yeah, do something here. This is very slow play. So you're finally doing it after like two minutes. Fighting the roamer. The roamer should die. Oh, he gets the trade out though, so it's even. You can go one deeper now. A scout's out through Z. You have no way of knowing that, but the flank's coming in. Your scout should be... Okay. So yeah, you've got two player advantage. Or one player, rather. The demo's crossed. The demo's caught. You could call that guy's caught. Oh, uh, damn. Your scout goes in for a bad flank. Your team's up top, and you're going to take a good solo here, probably. Yeah, you have a much better Uber. Make sure you're loaded for this post fight. Try to trap off the other doors as opposed to like focusing on the combo. Yeah, like if you had been sticking up top there on point, it might have been good. I don't think that soldier had much of a chance to kill you. So you're building, but you're also dry pushing left. People are pushing behind you here. You're gonna get flanked probably. Now you guys managed to leave. So you're down down two people. You can play this corner. If you just have your scout spot stuff, you can play this corner really loosely. And whenever you see like times two on the point, oh, your scout gets a kill, but he gets traded out. That's that's probably not a good pick. That's probably one situation where just like killing the demo man isn't the best. Like, 
if he was alive here, you guys hold this point, but now that he's dead, you can't hold the point anymore, and it's as simple as that. The demo doesn't do a ton from that side of the point and actually like help him capture. He can just kind of like maybe hit the scout a little bit, but if your scout was able to like spot things and like provide ship shot and back you up here, you could be blocking this point really hard with the beam because like the angle, like I said before, is a lot better for you. If you're playing to the, the extreme right of the door, they can't hit you at all, you can hit them a ton. So it would have been better for your scout to be alive there. So now you're, you're kind of like giving it up. Again, you have advantage, and I assume I assume what you're going to do is just uh, a scout uber over point, probably, to get into them really fast. And that has its advantages, but since they know that you have add, I imagine they're going to be playing far enough away. I'm going to let, let, let it go and see what happens, but I'm just making predictions at this point. I don't know what that scout was doing. I don't know what you're doing either. You have a, I don't know why you would go onto the point that early. Maybe there's some kind of miscommunication. He was expecting to get healed or something. But he, he threw away your advantage there, essentially. For what I couldn't see like to being a good opportunity. Okay. And your advantage slipped away because of the hesitation of that guy dying, and they ended up getting Uber too, which is like... I don't know. I saw from... Obviously, I had access to the numbers, but I saw when that scout died that they were at like 80%, and that you guys would have to like regroup after that and like then push. So... Maybe Uber counting could have been a little better. Don't even worry about the. I would. Okay, never mind. Yeah, that was just a, a failure waiting to happen, kind of. After after they used Uber, I don't know how committed your medic was, but you actually just need to fucking bail. Like, no good things will happen from playing a post fight in that point where they're invincible for longer than you. I feel like maybe you committed a little too long, on, the bat situation, and even if you were trying to get your medic out, I mean. It's on him for staying in, but you need to just say fuck him and try to live yourself. Because you could have done stuff on this midpoint too, you have people in fighting. Instead you're just giving it up. I'd imagine since you have good spawners, you're just going to push right yard. I honestly, you would have, I don't know, maybe would have rolled out to right yard and trapped it itself. Oh, is there a meta fresh spawner? Did we get their med? Yeah, you did. Okay, so they're not going to push. It's going to stay on my dot. I thought they're meddling. I didn't see. So I wouldn't have these traps up anymore. You could put up a more aggressive trap. You've got enough control here. Oh, you guys are pushing. Yeah, that's smart. I'm completely out of it. You get in. You need to play this really slowly as opposed to walking through. Eh. You get forced, which is bad. Your med... I don't know, you guys need to be more slow with that. Like, um... When you have the advantage, the only thing that they're gonna do is go for you. Your medic, I mean. Like, if you have uber advantage, their play is to nullify your uber advantage. And you can take advantage of... God. You can... Use that information to... Kind of put your medic in a position that baits out their aggression. While maintaining your uber advantage. And that's what you want to do. You want to... You don't even want to move your medic three choke there, honestly. Like, have him sit in the door until everyone else is through, and then the roamer's going to land directly in front of him. And if not, then your whole team is in, and like they've spotted and cleared things, and then the roamer doesn't get anything anyway. But instead, when they know you have advantage like that, their med's already in their choke as you're coming through your choke. There's no chance at all if you use the uber on your side of mid that you're going to kill the medic. You'd have to get like onto the midpoint or onto their crates or something to have an uber that kills their medic here. So the answer to that is to just not use your uber. I know it's not really a demo man thing, and I'm not really like talking about demo man stuff, but you go for the flank here. Good flank. You play it a little aggressively with your body. You could do that from a little further away. Good pipe there. Now that was correctly. That was like definitely the correct idea. I think that's something that I would have done. I would have. Um, had a scout go a little further ahead of me, and I would have played it like more back towards the um, towards the garage door itself. But yeah, that was definitely the right idea. So 
So now the damage that you did is something that you can push off of. They've gotten forced. And you get away from the Uber without being... Oh, your med doesn't have. Oh yeah, you used Uber. So that was bad counting on your guys' part. <laughs> it's like really obvious in hindsight, but... After you kind of take that point, you need to reassess what you're doing. You have to, again, just slow it down, regroup, like think about the situation, don't overchase. Maybe maybe the damage that you did actually baited your team in a little bit. I didn't consider that, but but then again, they get the pick. They try to keep coming when they need to slow down, and then your fragging classes who are still all good health because just the medic got caught out. They collapse on them, and now the fight's turning around again. So that's something that happens a lot at every level. I think a medic pick is. Like, it's really obvious, like, common knowledge, but when you kill the enemy medic, slow down, because that's, I don't know, that means that you've already got an advantage for the next, like, minute and a half, as long as you keep it moving. You don't need to commit harder at all. So they've got advantage again. You get bailed on. I don't think anybody told you they were all leaving. It's 50-50 um, whether that's like the right play, leaving or staying in, but there was definitely miscommunication there. And maybe that's something that you could work on is like being more aware of where your teammates are standing. That's a pretty important skill on Demo Man. Anyway, it seems like now it's going to be hard to hold this point without you. So. If you're lucky, your team can hold yard. They have small like add here, but I don't think that's enough for them to go off of. They are building pretty well. Nice. So there's fighting happening. They have Uber a little bit before you. Your scout dies. I wouldn't commit to this fight. I definitely wouldn't bomb into this fight. I don't know, was someone on crits, dude? I don't know what happened. That is very strange. I wouldn't have gone in with my combo there. I don't know why your combo went in. Your med, it seems like your med was in a position to leave. Like you could just get out. And if not, then like kiting away would have given you the Uber. I don't. I think your med dropped. You didn't get the Uber or something. Very strange. I don't know who would make the call to all in when the enemy PMS full Uber. I guess I can't really say it's your fault because that's just what the call was, but Definitely not something I would have called. I fast forwarded through a lot. You get a kill there. But your med died, so this is where you want to go aggressive. I'm oh, sorry. Or right, you put up a forward trap here. Because you know the enemy team's medic is alive and yours isn't, they're gonna be slowing down. You can take advantage of that like knowledge of pace and put up a more aggressive trap here. Maybe one that kills the medic, that's what I would go for. because you're kind of inclined on the enemy team if you have the enemy team's medic picked you're not inclined to like be super aggressive and go forward really fast and you can use that to your advantage and like kind of play in a more aggressive position so they've got a big ad here I'd imagine like, okay, thinking, if they were thinking how I think, they would push right yard here, because that's how you slow push granary yard. If they commit through left yard, where you're looking, they're going to get forced and they're probably not gonna kill your med. Let's look at where your medic is here. Okay, your med's in the shutter, not gonna die to an Uber that comes through choke or through like the patio there. So if I were them, I would dry push right yard, and knowing that, I would be sticking right yard essentially. I'd have a trap up on right and probably get a pick there. That's just how I would think about it. You think about what the enemy team wants to do in terms of like where they want to push. You think about how people play the map and then you put stickies there, you know? I think you'd probably do a lot more in right if they actually are going right. Yeah, you would have killed the demo if you had a trap on that. 
Come on. Yeah. So that's kind of like to, to kind of expand upon it. That's how you think about demo man is you think about what the enemy wants to do and then from there you try your hardest to like put yourself in a position to be able to damage them there. You just make make things easier for your team in that way. You do good damage here, but you commit your body too much. You like that's one thing that a lot of people do badly is when you're doing damage to an area, you have to like if the enemy's coming into you, right? They're gonna come into you no matter how much damage you do to them until you actually kill them. So what you need to do is like maximize the distance between you and them as you're fighting. So while you're shooting those stickies, you can be like a little closer when you start. As you start shooting, hold the S key and you can get out. And that's like the general philosophy behind how you actually fight groups of people as a demo man, is that you have to kite people. You can't stand your ground and do it. It just doesn't work that way. You get caught out. So people kind of like tunnel vision, they're kind of bad at moving and shooting at the same time. And you just like commit four stickies to one area and you don't give up ground because you think you're doing a ton of damage, but your damage will be a lot better if you just put stickies in front of your, or like behind you as you're backing up and then, you know, be doing damage then. And then you get to live too, which is a bonus. So it looks like they win this round. Wrong pause. There we go. Looks like you're going up top again. Oh no, you got choked. The demo's pretty slow. I'd rather, again, I think I went over this last mid, but I'd rather you just play the middle of the point when you know their team is kind of. So instead of committing, putting yourself behind crates, I'd, it's a much better position to be just in wide open space because that gives you more room to dodge. You destroy their demo, hit the scout to get them out. This is a really good mid. Then you rotate back around and put yourself... Like, even even if you have to shoot those soldiers, it's still better done from further away from them. Because the angle, when you're really close up next to the crates, is like hard to get good stickies on top of them. But if you're like separating yourself physically... And you're at good health to begin with, so you didn't need heals. If you're separating yourself physically from your medic, it makes it easier to shoot things that are on your medic. Because you have a different perspective on them, and it's easier to like hit the, the areas that they consider good ground. So you rotate into their team there, which is completely backwards in, in my opinion. But you do a lot of really good early damage on the, the catwalk and uh, it lets your, your team clean up really well and you get you let yourself get baited really well when the soldiers bomb you. So that wasn't a bad mid, I just think the way that you the way that you positioned and moved yourself was pretty pretty poor. And they're feeding picks on second. Should be pretty easy for you to just like really slow push this again. They have Uber here, you have, but you have two picks, so you are basically play this fight at the maximum distance you can. Don't worry so much about the gun. I feel like you're going to tunnel the gun, but the gun's a million miles away from you, and it doesn't shoot anybody unless they walk into its range, you know what I mean? It's okay to have that kind of section of the map um, not available to your team as long as you're doing important things on the other side of the map. So don't don't take a flash of the super for one. Um, it looks like your med's about to flash you, which is really bad, but you absolutely don't need a flash. You just keep spamming this heavy, maybe hit that soldier off the high ground. Make sure that the medic gets forced and make sure that you're ready to help your medic out. Do not, no, 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 no. So you kill your pocket there. And now the rest of what's happened, like you had to take the last half of the Uber to do what I was going to tell you to do and what you didn't need a flash to do anyway. Get ready to stop that door. Don't look in front of you while you're walking away. You're taking really bad trades here. Like you are playing these corners in a really unsmart way. If you were like a little closer on the right side, you can play the corner better there and just hit the door. 
And since up top is being controlled pretty well, that gives more space to your medic to heal you and heal your guy up top. Instead, you're just like in a game of chicken with the enemy demo man, and you don't win it because, I don't know, he has more people behind him. They end up giving it up and it's stalemate again. So they've got the gun on the back left as always, or it's on the front left this time. It looks like you guys are going to try to set up a sack. Where's your pocket up? Oh, you have a sniper up, so you already have one. I'm just going to slow play off of it. Do you have traps up right here? If you're not doing anything else with your ammo, it's smart. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I think I went over why I don't like that trap very much, but... I also... I also, like, disagree in general with the premise of just, like, having traps up and not actually... Because they're... Okay. The enemy team isn't going to send someone into you for no reason here. And your traps aren't going to do anything. No one's going to run right through your traps because they're in the same place always. They're always, like, static, you know? The enemy team can play around them really easily. I would rather you be charging and sniping and, like, trying to control position a little. Or at least, like, soften people up. Like, remove their buffs. That way... You kind of like don't let the enemy team have room to uh, explore or like try things out in the hold. You make them a lot less comfortable. You just keep applying pressure, kind of. I'd much rather do that because, like I said, the chances of a random sack coming into you aren't very good. If you lose somebody, then the chances that they sack into you are pretty high, and then you can start putting up traps. But right here, these traps aren't going to do anything. So I'd much rather you be like being smart about where they have a sniper, like you know get calls on where the sniper is before you do it obviously but like peek and spam try to hit people off the pipe if you can get deep in one side or uh, kind of shoot deep stickies up top or something like that so here you're just slowing it down a lot and playing with the sniper sniper gets the soldier a good pick now if, if your team is calling where people are, call they're all grouped up on the left side, um, when you get that one pick is when you want to take the less populated side of the map, so the right, and since the gun's on the left too, that's even better. You can like go deep in the uh, right side with your sniper, get him a good sight line there, and that's how you play off of it. You like snowball one pick into two picks into like a bad force by them, and then you kite it away and keep playing with your sniper. Like probably, since your sniper just got a kill up top, no one's going to be in a position to get shot from up top, so... Oh, damn. It's quick so it's to say that the other sniper, because the other sniper played it a little too too fast. And I feel like you guys got those two picks and you rush it. You instantly do like a... a suck. And you're, you're definitely way too deep here. Yeah, you're dead. I don't know, like, if that force was called. You definitely wait there, like, before you try to aggress into them. You just get two picks and you get the force, it's like a done deal that you've won the round if you don't die. But now they can retake the point and maybe get the force on your med if they're close enough. Yeah, they're gonna get the force on your med probably. No, never mind. So I don't think they'll be able to take two, as long as you get a soldier playing this door. Again, using the Uber here would be pretty bad. There's no chance at all that their medic dies to an Uber you use them. They're keeping the gun up even because they, they understand that you're not not gonna take this I mean that you are going to take this point immediately again. So they're not even switching off energy. You call it that guy pushes Z. He's dead. They're like I said before, they're just gonna bleed people into you kind of. They're gonna play way too aggressively trying to get the force and your goal here is to not use. Using is conceding your advantage to them and you're not gonna have a good uber. So now now that they're cornered, now that you can pick a side and use into it. I would use into left here, have one scout cap. Tell that guy that of course people are gonna to try to fight him on second and to watch up top, but now is when the uber going in would be good. Because they can't run away anymore. You know, running away at this point would be losing the round. Calls the gun still there. Gun's an easy pick. 
You guys use the Uber. You play, again, play to shoot this guy off the pipe. You don't need to commit to the point this early. You're not going to cap the point this early. There's still six people up. You have to get get kills on people, especially the demo man, and especially soldiers playing the high ground before playing the point becomes a viable option. I feel like people focus way too much on the point on this map because it's such a big map with such like good positional high ground and easy access to the resupply and stuff like that. You need to focus on getting frags before you focus on point. And like holding W to shoot this clump is not nearly as like your your combo is about to do that. Your combo is about to all in this group of people. You need to make sure that things are ready for your combo when the Uber is over and that they're not going to just die if they get kited. Yeah, you're focusing way too much on the point there. If you had just... Like I said, when the Uber fades, that's when the fight really starts. The Uber itself, you get maybe one pick, you get good damage, you get good positioning. And then when the Uber fades, and you start like turning kills really fast, that's when you need to be ready, loaded, and like prepare to like fight the enemy team as a demo man. As a demo man who's not involved in the Uber, I should say. If you played that a little more conservatively, you guys probably would have won the round. But instead what your Uber did was like just all in, you know? Everybody all in and then they kite into spawn and then your all in didn't get anything and they're all in better positions than you, so. It's even Ubers because your scout ran in and killed their mud on that last push. What I said before is true, nothing's probably going to happen here. Um, fighting is all going to be on the left side of the map probably. So I just wouldn't worry about the store. I'd have like a scout solo watch and then I'd play Lunchbox or Z. Traded one for one. Oh, you sacked for the med and got him. Nice. I was looking for a second. So here, here's a situation where their line of play is to all in you like morons, and your line of play is to preserve this advantage for long enough to get in a position to like finally strike and end the round. So I would trap up top. I would trap Z, and I don't know. Like obviously, I can see those two people there who are going to flank, but you should always just be expecting that. Like, idiots are going to come when their medic is dead and yours isn't, because that's the, the queue, the idiot queue. Pretty smart, no one's looking at Z. Is that guy coming, Z? No. They just have two people hiding in lunch. I wouldn't worry about them, you have full advantage here. They don't have heals yet. Your team's kind of making a mistake by chasing these guys. Yes, they get the frag. So you're being really aggro with this. You're wasting a lot, you're lagging a lot actually, I should say. Um, you play that pretty poorly, but it's an unlosable situation. I definitely think it's, um, just as a general rule of thumb, really, it's better to focus on positions as opposed to people. You think about where the enemy wants to move and then shoot there, as opposed to, like, their medic shoot him, you know? But that was a situation where playing point would have been really good. I guess that's what you guys ended up doing in the end, but you kind of, like... We're scattered about it. Just focus up top there. Just keep sticking that, yep. You roll both of their scouts. Um, I don't know how early the call that they were coming garage was. But whenever I get the call that the enemy team's coming garage and I can deny their scouts like that, I actually just take the forward crate and sticky their garage. Like, it works pretty well most of the time, as long as their scouts aren't like super, like super aggressive and you did a good job of stuffing them to just like completely keep the enemy team out of mid. Whenever the enemy goes against garage against me, when the enemy, enemy team goes garage against me and I'm up top, I just commit really hard to locking them completely out of the mid. And it works most of the time, to be honest, because you like control the scouts on the bats properly.
So their meds dead. You're just trying to all in here. You guys can maybe win this if you play it smart. Nice sticky there, he might die. No, he's real hurt. So this is really good, really good scrappy play. You're like abusing sight lens in a really smart way. What the hell, did he not see that guy? <laughs> so Spelly is on a quest right now. So they're, they're down a demo. Oh, Soldier came in because, okay. It was really bad actually that you turned around when that guy was behind because you let another guy in. This guy might get your medic. No, he didn't. Generally, like, it's a pretty bad habit a lot of people have where they look at a door and then something is called and they turn their attention from that door. If you're going to be controlling something, just be controlling it. Don't worry about other stuff. Just let your team know that you've got this thing on lock and let them do the rest. So they are got in, a guy got in through the door you want to go through. You've got Big Ad here. Um, they've got like five off classes. So again, it's a situation where their medic, their heavy, their NG are not going to let themselves die. They're going to be so far away. Their med might be on vaccinator or some bullshit like that. I don't know. Um, there's no chance those people die. So you just want to, this, this Uber is going to be entirely about position and damage advantage. And as long as the people who aren't in the Uber, if that is you, I don't know, as long as those people don't take a ton of damage or get picked during the fight, then as, if you use the Uber correctly, like take positioning, you'll win. But there's a sniper left you're gonna have to use early. And you're bombing in, I don't know. Their heavy's playing it completely wrong. Um, their NG and sniper are playing it wrong. After I kill this gun, I spawn camp the left door probably. I like shoot a sticky at the heavy to get him weak and then like spawn camp the left because you see two people in spawn there. They're not going to be in the fight if you just cover that door. Um, I don't know, that's a really chaotic fight, but I definitely think that you commit your body way too much to focus and then the people who weren't in the Uber got either dropped or they committed too early and then you, your team just in general isn't shooting the same thing or playing good positions, so. I know it's probably pretty vague. They weren't even on the accidenter, so. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, their heavy, like what I would have done there when I saw the way that their heavy was playing it, and there's a smart way to play heavy on this map and then the way he was doing it, which is just to commit to high ground with whatever health you have, stand still and try to track people. Sorry. Um, if their heavy was further back in a safer place, he would just be baiting you to kill him. But this heavy was literally just being as a, he was playing as like a meat field, you know, he was expecting to die. So if he's expecting to die, just kill him, you know? If he's not trying to dodge damage and he's not playing in a place where he can get easily healed, then just kill that guy really fast. Um, so that's what I would have tried to do during that Uber. I would have done it, I would have not bombed in. Um, but I definitely would have tried to focus the heavy there and then regrouped with people on the high ground. Instead, what you did was kind of bad. So you rightfully get forced out there. So this is another situation where you can kind of it's like harder to do with people who are lower level, but you can kind of predict that you back up this door, so they're going to push the other door. And like reading into that is a really important part of becoming a better demo man, is knowing like people are going to actively try to avoid you when they're pushing. That's like the core like precept behind any, when you're main calling, that's like what you do when you're calling a push, is like which door is the demo man not at? We're pushing that door. And it's kind of a mind game in a lot of ways to like, they think I'm here, I'm going to be here, you know? So they're gonna push out Z or left yard here. They get in left without being called yet. Now they're called. They've got add. Guy rotates back through. You're committing on these flankers. Yeah, I know, you committed way too hard there. That's, when the call is that they're backing up from left yard, 
then you realize like, okay, they're wrapping back around to us. They've got Uber advantage. We have to be scared. You see these two unbuffed people standing around your stick as you get really baited. That's like really, really poor. You have to focus on the core of their team as opposed to like any any extremities that like might possibly present themselves to be an advantage. You have to focus on where the core of their team is moving and like try to position yourself away from that in a position to do damage to it. You lose two people there and they don't even get get forced. So that's really, really dreadful. You'll have Uber for your second. Ideally you'll get the force coming into this and you'll be able to like repop into them. That would be like the really smart play. And again, since they still have advantage, I bet I bet they go uh, right here. I know you just spawned so you didn't have time to rotate over, but... No, they're actually... They realize their advantage is small enough, or not big enough, to like correctly dry push it, so they're just trying to get right into you with the zebra because they think this like, advantage is fading, and it is. They don't have advantage anymore. So they beef a little bit there. This is good. I would bomb. Bomb a little faster there and you could, I don't know, no one's behind you. Um, when I see the med there, like, getting that med pick is going to be really crucial. It's only those two people alive. There's a guy behind who's not doing anything, but I would have bombed to like over their garage and then they're, you kind of have good vision over the entire middle point and there's no way their medic gets out there. Like here, it looks like their med's gonna live and you definitely could have prevented that because the soldier didn't have any ammo. He was shooting at you the whole time and like rocket jumping and shit like that. So it would've been really easy for you to catch their medic out there if you had uh, been a little more on the ball. And that's the kind of situation when you have an already big advantage and you're trying to make it even bigger where you want to bomb his demo man, especially when the enemy team doesn't have any scouts alive. It's just free. Oh, their med gets chased down by your scout. And then your other scout wins the 1v1 with the flanker. So, okay. Big ad here. What do we do? Slow it down. They're gonna mongo in. They're all gonna feed for your med. If, if any of them are even alive or capable of doing that, that's what they're gonna do. So none of them do anything. Um, they're doing the same setup they had before. I'm gonna repeat myself again. The secret to winning this is to not all in with the Uber charge and hope that you get six frags within eight seconds because that's not gonna happen. Look for other advantages that you can make during it. I wouldn't go in directly behind your team here. I'd play from the window. I would even, or I wouldn't even come in up top, basically. I think it's a lot better to like come in from a different side. Like, you don't need to be in right now. You're not going to accomplish anything, really. You're just going to get stuffed at a door, probably. Maybe it'll be 40 damage, but... Um, being where the end, where your team is in the post-fight, then you get a buff. You have eight stickies loaded, four pipes loaded. Your team's already done what they can. Then you come in, the enemy team's all grouped up, and you do a lot of work. Yeah, that was dreadful. You have no reason to be involved in that fight. That gun was not an urgent priority at all. That gun wasn't doing anything. You could have killed that gun if you like pushed in right just without taking any damage at all. So definitely no no good there. The demo solo pushes up top and gets picked, and their heavy's pushing up top too. Their push out here is actually pretty bad. So they've got advantage. I really don't think they're going to push off of it, but considering they've got a heavy NG, you know, now a spy, so they look like they're going to try to even things up. Interested in seeing how you guys break this. I'm going to fast forward until you actually do. You do a sack in. You have a spy up. Oh, your spy gets their scout. You get the gun. You're playing this a lot better so far. Maintain high ground. Oh. No, you guys win the round. I kind of missed that. I don't know. I fast forwarded in a bad way. I don't think he really did anything. Um, 
You guys got two picks and you used then. They, oh no, did you guys drop their med? I think you probably did because he was on vaccinator at the end. Is it over? Yeah, it looks like it's over. So I'm sorry for fast forwarding at the very end there, but if you found it, you know, useful. I think um, what you were saying, hold on, let me look at this again. I think, I think um, in your message you asked if you're playing aggressive enough, and I think that you are. Your aggression is just focused in the wrong place a lot of the time. You need to think about what the enemy team is trying to do more, as opposed to just like playing in kind of standard positions, doing everything by the books. Think about what the enemy team is doing and how you can counter it specifically, and you'll get a lot more mileage out of things. Also, during stalemates, um, be a bit more adventurous, I guess is all I'm going to say. Because you, you put up traps and you don't really contribute a lot to your team during a stalemate, which is what Demo's good at. Um, even without taking a load of heals, like getting tanked at a choke and like eating spam and trading spam, you can um, do like good snipe stickies, like take people's buffs off, things like that, and I'll let this play out. Um, and that just provides a, an extra level of pressure that's really good. And that might be why your damage stats are kind of low. I meant, you mentioned like worrying about that. Um, and aside from that, like I think I went over it a lot during the thing itself, but those Uber advantage pushes, if you're not the prime target of the Uber, you need to play them a lot smarter. You need to not take flashes of them because you being invincible doesn't do anything important. You shouldn't be getting shot at anyway. Killing sentry guns on last points that are as big as granary. The enemy team had a sentry gun every single last push you'd had, you did. It's not as important as um, just making sure that you stay healthy because the sentry doesn't shoot anybody who doesn't walk within its range. And as long as, and you can kill it from any range, basically. So I hope you found that stuff helpful. Um,